Now, we know that every number can be expressed in the general form or its expanded form. If we take the number 63, then it can be written as 60 plus 3 or 6 into 10 plus 3. Similarly, 643 can be expressed as 600 plus 40 plus 3 or 6 into 100 plus 4 into 10 plus 3 into 1. So, while writing the number in its general form, we multiply the individual digits with their place values and then add them together. If we consider the number 567, then 5 is at the hundreds place, 6 is at the tens place and 7 is at the ones place. In this case, the number can be expressed as 5 into 100 plus 6 into 10 plus 7 into 1. In general, if we have a number A, B, C, where A, B and C are the digits in the hundreds, tens and ones place respectively, then its general form is A into place value of A, that is 100, plus B into 10, plus C into 1. Now, if we reverse the digits, we will have the number as CBA, and then its general form will be C into 100, plus B into 10, plus A into 1. Since the name of this topic is playing with numbers, and we just saw that a number can be represented in its general form. Let's play a game. I'll ask you to perform a few calculations step by step. So just follow me carefully, okay? All right. The first step is to choose any two-digit number. For example, 51. Then reverse it to get a new number. Since I have considered 51 as an example, if I reverse the digits, the number we get will be 15. Next, add the original number to this number. Considering 51 as the original number and 15 as the new number, their sum would be 51 plus 15, that is 66. And finally, divide the answer by 11. I can tell you that the remainder after you divide the number by 11, and it is 0. You see, when 66 is divided by 11, we know that 11 sixes are 66. That is, 66 is a multiple of 11. So we get the remainder as 0. Was it true for the two-digit number you chose too? I am sure it was. Now, let's find out why this game works the way it does. So, the first step was to choose any two-digit number, right? So, let the two-digit number be in the form of AB, where A and B are the two digits. So, its expanded form will be 10A plus B. On reversing the number, the digits will get reversed and the new number formed will be BA. And its expanded form is 10B plus A. Now, we have to add the original number to the new number. So, 10A plus B will be added to 10B plus A which gives us the sum as 11a plus 11b. In the two terms, we see that 11 is common. So we take 11 common outside the bracket, and inside the bracket, we will have a plus b. Therefore, the sum is 11 into the bracket a plus b. We can see clearly that the sum is a multiple of 11, irrespective of the values of a and b, and so when we divide it by 11, it will always give us the remainder as 0 for all the values of a and b. Now, let's try to twist the game a little. Instead of adding the original number to the new number at the third step, what if we subtract the two numbers from each other? What will we get? Let's see. We will have the original number ab, which is represented as 10a plus b, and the new number ba, that is 10b plus a. So, when we subtract the new number from the original number, we will have 10a plus b minus in the bracket 10b plus a. And that is 10a plus b minus 10b minus a. Subtracting the like terms, we will get 10a minus a minus 10b plus b. And that gives us 9a minus 9b. 
in this difference we can take 9 common so the difference will be 9 into bracket a minus b. Now one thing to note here is that when we subtract 10 b plus a from 10 a plus b we are assuming that a b is a bigger number as compared to b a. So whenever we carry out the subtraction we'll ensure we subtract the smaller number from the bigger number. So whenever we carry out the subtraction we'll ensure that we subtract the smaller number from the bigger one all right great. So moving on we can see that the difference is a number which is a multiple of 9. So if we divide it by 9 it will give us the remainder as 0 irrespective of the values of a and b. But what if we choose a two digit number where both the digits are the same? Say we consider the number 66. In this case the number formed after reversing the digits will again be equal to 66 and so the difference between the two numbers will be 0. Now 0 is a number that's divisible by all numbers so it goes without saying that it is also divisible by 9. Therefore in every case the resulting number will be divisible by 9 which means that the remainder will be 0. We can conclude that the difference between a number and the number formed by reversing its digits is divisible by 9. But that's not where the trick ends. Let's take this one more step further. So when we divide the difference by the number 9 we get the remainder as 0. But what about the quotient? Can we guess that as well? Let's see. The resulting difference is either going to be 9 into bracket a minus b or 9 into bracket b minus a. So when we divide the resulting number by 9, the quotient will either be a minus b or b minus a, right? This means the quotient will be the difference of the digits based on which one is greater, a or b. If a is greater than b, then the quotient will be a minus b. Else, if b is greater than a, then the quotient will be b minus a. Interesting, right? Let's verify this with our number 51. When we reverse the number, it becomes 15. Now, 51 is greater than 15, so the difference is 51 minus 15, which is equal to 36. On dividing 36 by 9, we get the remainder as 0 and the quotient is 4, which is also the difference between the digits that is 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. How cool is that? And that's all folks. Hope you had just as much fun playing with numbers as I did. Bye bye. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.